But let me tell you, if somebody comes to me that I have to put my trust in to take care of something, and they say, yeah, I'll be glad to do that for you. Well, it may not work, though. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not that good a mechanic. I'm talking about working on car. I'm not that good a mechanic, so, you know, uh, but yeah, I'll be glad to take that engine apart and try to put it together. And, <laughs> you know, and, 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 you know, and I, I've only had a few extra pieces a couple of times. But, uh, but yeah, you know, okay, somebody tells me that, I'm going somewhere else. Right? right? Why? Because we have to have confidence in what we do. If you don't, get confidence. How do you get confidence? Get better at it. How do you get better at it? Study it out. Go into it. Practice it. Amen? But you, nobody has ever went to the Olympics by going, well, I'll give them my best, but, you know, it might not work. No, they go in there. Everybody runs so as to win. Amen? So you have to go into prayer with the idea of, I'm going to pray. I'm, now listen, here's the thing. If you're going to pray in faith, you get the answer before you ever go to God. What does that mean? That means you find out what the answer is before you ever go to God to talk about it. And how do you do that? You go to his word and you find out what he has said about that topic. And then you bring that and you settle it that it's his will to do this thing before you ever talk to him about it. See, if you go in there, listen, it's a prayer of faith, not the prayer of hope. A lot of people pray the prayer of hope and think they prayed the prayer of faith and then wonder why it doesn't get answered. Now, hope is important, but hope without faith won't bring the answer. Right? Now, faith without hope is non-existent because you have to have hope before you can have faith. Right? Right? So all of this, goes, and where do you get hope from? Well, you go into the Word of God and you find out this is possible. Matter of fact, God likes this. This is what he wants to do. This is what he's always done. Now, that's building hope. Well, he can do it for me too. And then you start finding out he wants to do it, or he's already said it's already done, and you settle that in yourself. You go, oh, wow, this is good. Now, So now all i got to do is receive it. That's the purpose of prayer. See, the purpose of prayer is not your talking. The purpose of prayer is for you to receive. Do you get that? Let me say it again. The purpose of prayer is not so God can hear you talk. The purpose of prayer is for you to receive, which means the, the moment of your prayer, if it's a true prayer, at, that is the moment that you received the provision provided for in the Bible. In other words, when, if you're going to pray, you are to look at the date and the time. You are to write it out, write out the scripture, write out the... The, the prayer itself, and when, as soon as you pray, go, yep, that's mine right now. I receive it in Jesus' name. And then get you one of those stamps and stamp it. <laughs> Say, this, this is done. This, this is how the prayer of faith works. Now, people say, well, but, but you know, you make it sound so mechanical. Yes, and aren't you glad God did it that way? Amen. Why? Because if he didn't make it that way, you could never pray in faith. You would all, always be praying in hope, which is how most people pray. Because they're always praying, well, we're just going to pray and see what God does. No, you got to see what God's going to do and then pray. Did you hear that? you got to see what God's going to do and then pray. You don't pray and then wait and see what God's going to do. You, you go in there knowing the answer before you ever get in there, right? It, it, it is very similar to a courtroom case. Right? And a good lawyer knows he never asks a question that he doesn't already know the answer to. Amen? Because it will turn on you. Okay? And you will end up losing the case. So whenever you go to God, the, it's the simplest way to talk about it is this. When you believe that you receive the moment, and we're actually we're going to get to this in just a minute to give the details. But the moment you pray, you believe that you receive. Now, that doesn't mean you say, I believe I receive. Now, you can say that. But saying that doesn't mean you're believing that. You got that? So you have to first get yourself to a place where you know that when you pray, you're going to believe. You're going to believe that you have received. Now, the minute you believe you have received, you have just put yourself in the future. And everything you say about that now has to be in the past. Did you hear that? If you're going to pray effectively... When you pray, you have now believed that you receive and you shall have, according to Mark chapter 11. So once you have believed that you receive, now you, that means you believe that you have it, okay, that you have received it. And it says, and you shall have it. 
which means it is coming. It is there, but you have received it, so it's yours. So there's no other way, there's no other thing that can happen other than the fact that that prayer is answered and it's answered the way you prayed it. You got that? I hear people all the time. Well, you know, sometimes you pray and God gives you an answer and sometimes the answer is yes. Sometimes it's no. Sometimes it's wait. Right? That is not Bible. Because if you're going to pray, you're going to pray the promises of God and all the promises are in him. Yes. And in him, so be it. Amen. So it's not a matter of yes, no, maybe, who knows? No, it's settled. And if you, if you can't settle it, why? Because his word is forever settled in heaven. Psalm 119, verse 89. If you can't settle it, you're not in faith. And if you're in faith, once you do settle it and you speak and you believe you receive, from then on, you talk as though it's already done. Why? Because it was. When was it done? The moment you believed you received. Now, there may be a process to getting you to believe that you receive. Right? It'd be great to just go, oh, I believe. And I believe I receive right now, and it's done. Okay? It's great to say that, but you can say that and not mean it and not in it not be in you. So how can you make sure that when you say that, you mean it? You go to the scripture, you immerse yourself in it, and you just live in it. What does that mean? You abide in him, and his words abide in you. And that word gets in you, and you start speaking that word, and pretty soon, man, you get aggressive. And so it's funny because you'll be, yeah, this is my, well, this is mine. You know, used to was, well, let's see what God says. I don't know. Let me see here. Oh, oh, that would be wonderful. That would be good. And then the more you dwell on it, it gets stronger and it, and it moves from that would be good over into an aggression. And you start looking and go, oh, glory to God, that's mine right there. That's, you see that? That's mine. That's mine. Well, I, but I don't see it in you. Well, that's because you can't see with the eyes of faith, but that's mine right there. Amen. Right? And you start, and all of a sudden, somebody would say something. Well, you don't look. Well, I am. Why? Because I've received. Well, I think you're in denial. I'm denying you right to speak into my ear. Go away. Well, that isn't very nice. You want the answer or not? You want to live in the answer? You want to live getting along with everybody? 